Okay, I think we, yeah. we often relate UVB to, to D3 synthesis, and that's kind of where we put all of our eggs in the basket there. But it also does many other things as well. So maybe we could just kind of round out the conversation discussing that. Yeah, sure. This is just a little bit from one of the talks I've given, and I think it's probably I've managed to animate it sufficiently to, uh, to run through it. Perfect. Um, so you basically got, a sh this is our turtle, is, you know, that's our reptile. You've got the UVB in the light. And um, first of all, I think people don't often realize that UVB itself has direct local effects, which are quite important on skin. And it kills bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And there was a long debate about does, does UVB kill viruses? Yes, it does. It kills viruses and bacteria and fungi on the skin. So that's a direct effect, which is quite beneficial. It also um, affects the skin cells, nothing to do with vitamin D. It's just the way that the UVB works. It, it actually modulates the immune system. It stimulates the white blood cells, the lymphocytes. And we all know it causes tanning, which is the melanocytes um, producing the pigment melanin. So it's important for skin health. I'm talking about sensible amounts of UVB, obviously natural amounts of UVB, not, not just blasting things. Mm -hmm. It also creates beta endorphins in skin. The, the skin cells respond by secreting beta endorphin. Well, of course, that's our happiness hormone. So that gets into the bloodstream. And it's, it's a, a huge stimulus for animals to bask because it makes it feel nice. And I think it does for us too. Um, and of course, vitamin D. So we'll look at the vitamin D. <clears throat> UVB works on a cholesterol in skin. It's a very simple biochemical change. It turns that D, uh, 7 DHC cholesterol into a chemical called pre D3. When the animal is warm, that pre D3 transforms itself automatically into vitamin D3. It's, it's, there's a slightly more complicated process than that, but that's a pretty good summary of, of, how, of how it works. So you've got vitamin D3 in the skin. Now, in the skin, it has a local effect on skin cells. <clears throat> Within the skin cells, there are enzymes which will transform the vitamin D3 into 25-hydroxy vitamin D. They hydroxylate the, the vitamin D. And they also have a second enzyme which turns it into 125-hydroxy. And that is an active hormone. That's a very potent hormone. And what it does is inside those cells, it works on the DNA to transcribe genes and also to signal between the cells. So the skin is actually working with the vitamin D3 and it improves the health of the skin because it stimulates antimicrobial peptides. So that's a little, little chemicals which prevent bacteria from, and, and viruses from, from getting into the cells. Also increases the cell wall barrier so that it's a stronger barrier against invasion from pathogens. And also it modulates skin cell division so the skin cells are, are, are tend not to be stimulated to, to divide too much. And it modulates the immune system by working on the, the white blood cells in the skin. So you've got more skin health because of the vitamin D. But the vitamin D doesn't just stay in the skin, it moves into the bloodstream. And that's called systemic effects, the, the effects to the rest of the body. So the first thing the vitamin D3 does is it goes in the bloodstream to the liver. And that enzyme, which we talked about before, converts it to the 25-hydroxy D and releases it into the bloodstream as that. It doesn't go any further in the liver. You can also have vitamin D3 in the diet doing the same thing. Of course, you haven't got the skin effects, but you've got it going straight through to, to the liver from the gut. And a small amount of it is needed every day to be passed into the bloodstream to go to the kidney where it activates it, it produces that second transformation into the 125-hydroxy D3, which is the active hormone. And that's an endocrine function, which means that it's, it's carried in the bloodstream and it's under very tight control with the levels of parathyroid hormone and the calcium and phosphate in your blood. And what it does is it works on your calcium metabolism. And everybody knows vitamin D and calcium go together. It's been known for many, many years. And what it does is it enables you to take up calcium from the gut and it enables it to be laid down in the bone. And it also keeps the levels up for your muscles, your growth, your reproduction. All of those need calcium. That's the classic picture. And that was all that was known until perhaps 20 or 30 years ago. But what would happen if you had more vitamin D3, if you had the optimal amounts that, that the animal needs 
when it's naturally in, in a good environment. Well, you then have plenty because you don't need much for this process. So you start to get enough to overflow and to fill up the rest, all the rest of the body. And it goes to all the different organs in the body and every, virtually every organ they look at has the way of, of picking up the 25 hydroxy D3 into their cells. And it's called an autocrine and paracrine function, which just means basically it's not a, an endocrine hormone. And also the D3 itself, before it's transformed, that will also flood the system. It has a very short, short life, only, only 24 hours. So you need D3 every day to get that effect of it going into, your, into all the different organs. And that is also transformed inside these cells, just as it was in skin, to the 25 hydroxy D and to the 125. So inside the cells, you've got this tiny little system going on in each cell of making active hormone that doesn't escape into the bloodstream, because if it did, it would muck up the calcium metabolism. But inside the cells, it does the same things as it did in the skin cells, the gene transcription, the intracellular signaling, and it controls over 2000 genes. It's a really wow. important hormone. And when you look at all the different things that it does, depending on which organ it's in, it's just amazing. It, alters the immune responses, it activates the immune system to um, withstand things like a cytokine storm, identifying um, which proteins are invading and making sure that you, you get an antibody response, not a cytokine storm. It regulates cell division. It's really important in identifying when cells go wrong. So it picks up possible cancer cells and enables them to be thrown out by the body. So it's, it's also preventing problems. It's involved in neural development, in, in um, growing embryos. Um, it's often thought that when they die in shell and they never hatch, it's possibly to do with the lack of vitamin D or the lack of, of uh, calcium, which is because of the lack of vitamin D, um, not enabling the muscle development to, to do that final twist that they need to get the head in the right position to get out of the shell. Um, and also they found that when you have injuries, uh, vitamin D will help repair of nerves. Mm. Um, in humans, it's been worked out that it affects insulin production, it affects cardiac function, it's really complicated systems, and it affects fertility. Um, there have been quite a lot of, of trials of vitamin D actually affecting sperm count um, and obviously affecting egg production because you've got to have the calcium as well for the eggshells and, and to be laid down. And you've also got to have the D3 for the embryo to be able to utilize the calcium. So there's an awful lot going on. Um, and we miss out a lot if we're insufficient, because if you're insufficient, you lose all of that lot straight away. You, you get you, This is absolutely vital for life because you need it for your muscles, your growth. You've got to have this. So the body prioritizes this and forgets, forgets about that. And an awful lot of people are walking around today with mm -hmm. this sort of level of vitamin D enough to keep us going. But you don't get any of that bonus extra you don't get that the you bonus. would normally get if it yeah. was coursing through yeah. your blood. That's wow. right. That's right. But if you get deficient, if you get really deficient, then you haven't even got enough for the kidney to make the calcium metabolism work, you've already lost all your systemic effects and now you're going to start having problems with this. What happens then if you haven't got enough of this is that you can't absorb your calcium from your gut and you've got a problem because it can't be laid down into the bone or and this starts to go wrong. And this is where you're starting to get your metabolic bone disease because you're starting to get your, your twitching, your low calcium. And then if it carries on, what happens then is your blood calcium levels start to fall and that gives your body a jerk. The parathyroid gland cuts in and says, hang on, guys, what's going wrong here? It pushes the kidney to produce every bit of parathyroid, uh, every bit of uh, 125 it can. And what that does, it also works on the bone directly, is to push the, the calcium to come out of the bones because it wasn't coming out of the gut. It's got to come from somewhere. And the parathyroid hormone pushes the calcium to come out of the bones to keep you alive. And that is where you get your MBD. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much explained what MB MBD is. You've got these, well, the, the bones get really frail because they, all the calcium has been leached out of them. If you get them healing, you get these classic sort of 
half healed bones. This is a little frog, believe it or not, with MBD. And it's just a sad case because it's also totally preventable because you have to be so deficient in vitamin D to have that happen. So I think yeah. we better stop there. It's really amazing. And it sort of it sort of makes you, as you learn all these different functions of light in general, not just UV, you, it, it's hard to not think about yourself as a human thinking, like, oh, yeah. I am barely in the sun, especially living where I live. I don't spend enough time in the sun. And I imagine how much health disorders are associated with just that alone, with not getting any of those extra benefits from D3 oh. being low on D3. And it's, it's pretty remarkable. Yes, it is. And the nice thing about humans is that we're quite good at absorbing it from the gut. Right. So, so supplementing vitamin D, especially when you've got things like COVID around, it's it's really good to do that to get your immune system up to scratch. And there's there's loads of loads of research being done on that. But yeah, you can take vitamin D supplements. Yeah. But well, and the UVB, think... you're missing all the effects that the UVB does. So you know, people say, well, can't I just give my reptiles powdered vitamin D? And I said, well, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Definitely can. But you're going to miss out all those effects that we've talked about of the skin and the antibacterial effects and just the general well-being, of, of, you know, from, from being out in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Even that beta endorphin, like you talked about, that feel good yeah. feeling, mm. you'd be depriving that of the animal without offering it.